Good morning, everybody. We're back today, and we're going to take a little bit of time to work on using the payment function in Excel. Uh, the payment function is oftentimes used to figure out what a car payment or a house payment would be, depending on the amount of the loan, the percentage rate, and the length of the loan. The function is not very difficult to use, but I like to use the function dialog box to use it. If I click on this little FX button right here, that's my function button, I get a list of the most recently used functions, and it's the PMT function. If that function does not appear here, just type it up at the top and hit go and it'll bring it up. So I'll go ahead and put that in. It's very simple to use, but one of the key things you need to understand is that everything in here has to be done on a monthly basis. Now, the reason I bring this up is because this first line where it says rate, that's the interest rate, okay, the rates are always given yearly amounts. So when I go over here and I click on my cell for the rate, I have to divide that by 12 to change that to a monthly amount. The next item that they want in there is the total number of payments. Well, in this case, what I have is years. So I know it's 20 years, but there are 12 payments a year, so I take it times 12. And then the last thing you need to put in is the present value of the loan. How much is the loan for? Not how much you're actually going to be paying to the bank. One little thing that you have to keep in mind is that this function will return a negative number unless you put a minus here. And then I'm just going to click on my loan amount. And when I hit OK, there is my payment. I'll be paying $547.76. Now that does not include taxes uh, or uh, your insurance, something like that. So obviously a house payment will probably be a little bit higher than that. Now that I've got that uh, function put in there and I've found that payment, I want to use that to create what's called a data table. And this is going to be a one input data table. And to do this, I'm going to click underneath the word payment. And we're going to figure out how much our payment would be if we change the amount of the loan. So I'm going to start off with a $75,000 loan. And then I'll go to $80,000. And we'll just increase that. I'll create a fill series here. We'll increase it down to $120,000. Now, when you create an input data table, the key is these labels are underneath the formula and one cell or one column to the left. But when I select it, I select the whole block like this. To do this, we're going to go to where it says data, and we're going to go to where it says what if analysis and choose data table. Now you have to make a choice and that is is this going to be a row input or is this going to be a column input? The only thing you have to do is look and see where your substitution values are and what I mean by substitution value is the numbers that we have over here, these labels, are going to be substituted for the original amount of the loan. But all of these labels are in one column, which means that it is a column input. All of these labels represent different amounts, so they will be substituted for the original amount in the formula, which was in B3. And then we just hit OK, and now it gives us our payment. I'll go ahead and select that. We'll format that real quick for currency so it's easier to read. So now you can see as the amount of your loan goes up what happens to your payment. Now that's a one input data table. Now I want to go over and do a two input data table. Actually let's do this. Let me just select this and I'll delete that table out. For a two input data table it's a little bit different. The labels do not go over to the left. They start directly underneath the function. We're going to have two sets of labels in this case. This set going directly underneath, and then we're going to go over here to the right, and we're going to do another set. And in this case, we'll do different percentage rates. So we'll start at 0.04, and then we'll increase it by a quarter of a percent. And I'll just pull that out here to the right. We'll take it up to 6%. 
and we'll format that as percent and show a couple decimal places. So now we're going to create our two input data table. And the key again, make sure your labels are located directly under and directly to the right of the formula. So now we select the formula and over like this. Okay, make sure you don't go select payment. In this case, the formula is in the top left hand corner of your selection. We go back to data, what if analysis and data table. We have two inputs. The first input is the row input, and the labels that are in a row are all these percentages. So we're substituting for the original percentage, which is up here in B1, and then the column input is going to be the same thing that we did before, the amounts. And now when I hit OK, it pops all of our numbers in there, and now we can see quickly what our payment is going to be.